In 2018, Nassim Taleb published a book entitled Skin in the Game, Hidden Asymmetries in Daily Life. In it, he introduced a new term, intellectual yet idiot. It's a term that he coined when writing an essay on the subject, which was included as a chapter in the book mentioned. I call this a new term, and yet it really isn't. It's a repackaging of a term so old that I can remember it from childhood, the educated idiot. This is someone who has an education, even advanced degrees in some cases, and yet lacks common sense. There's a lot of educated idiots in the world, and they seem to want to take over. Let's talk about it. I must admit that I was unaware of Dr. Nassim Taleb before a few days ago. I posted a reply to a tweet by Chuck Woolery about how when I was a child, certain people were called educated idiots. Evidently, a lot of people recognized the term because I got a lot of likes on the tweet. But one of the responses to my comment claimed that I had stolen the idea from Dr. Taleb. I consider that to be a hell of an accusation, so I looked Dr. Taleb up. As I noted in the introduction, Dr. Taleb's essay entitled Intellectual Yet Idiot was first published in 2016, according to what I found on Dr. Taleb's website. I'll post the link in the description to that website for you. Yet, I was born in the 1970s, and I specifically remember hearing Educated Idiot used by my grandfather who died decades before Dr. Taleb's essay was published. A little more research turned up the Nicomachean Ethics a treatise written by Aristotle more than 2,300 years ago. In Book 6, Aristotle discusses practical wisdom, phronesis, and wisdom, Sophia. Today, we call Sophia education and phronesis experience. Aristotle noted that it was possible to have Sophia without phronesis. So if I've stolen the concept of an educated idiot from anyone, I've stolen it from Aristotle. I believe that after 2,000 years, the Nicomachean Ethics is in the public domain, which might explain why the concepts within it have passed into common usage. However, if Aristotle wishes to sue me for plagiarism, I promise you I won't contest the lawsuit. Dr. Taleb's book is interesting reading. In it, he digests more than a few concepts that are particularly germane in the current world we live in. I really enjoyed reading it, especially since his essays confirm more than a few principles which I was taught as a child. The term intellectual yet idiot, or IYI, particularly caught my attention. Dr. Taleb has a slightly different take on the IYI than my understanding of the educated idiot, but there are enough similarities that I have no problem accepting his theory on the IYI as being functionally the same. I would use his term in deference to his published status, but honestly, I just like the term which I grew up with better. Let's start with what an educated idiot is. As I said before, educated idiots have at least some higher education. Many of them have multiple college degrees. Now to be clear, this is not to say that all people with college educations are idiots. I work in education after all. I have a pair of college degrees and I'm finishing up a third. So I know many people with college educations, and most of the people I know are not educated idiots. Plenty of people have education, experience, and common sense enough to know when to trust the expertise of others. The key difference is in the second half of the definition. Idiot. Educated idiots are fully aware of what they know. Some of them are experts in their fields. What they aren't aware of is what they don't know. They lack common sense, which in turn leaves them unable to shut up and listen to other people who say something with which they disagree. Thus, the educated idiot feels entitled to claim expertise in all things, including matters in which they have a limited or non-existent understanding. Taleb states, and I agree entirely, that knowledge gained through experience is vastly superior to that gained via reasoning. Experiential learning is actually a long-standing educational philosophy upon which Aristotle wrote in the Nicomachean Ethics. I mentioned Aristotle's term for it before, phrenesis. The theories on experiential learning and the models derived from those theories are the basis for modern interactive learning, but the concept is something that anyone can understand. Many people learn better by doing, especially when what is being taught is a practical activity. 
future surgeons learn their trade first by classroom instruction, but no surgeon will be certified in their field before they watch procedures being performed, then assist in procedures, and finally perform procedures of their own under the watchful eye of a fully certified surgeon. The same principles are used to teach everything from trades like plumbing, to military operations, to professions like teaching. For an educated idiot, Experience must bend to education, the exact opposite of what common sense dictates. For example, an educated idiot might carefully explain the superiority of monoculture farming with crop varieties specifically designed to maximize yields. A lifelong farmer knows that growing the same crop on the same ground year after year eventually depletes the soil. That farmer knows that using the same herbicide year after year will lead to weeds showing up which are resistant to that herbicide just as using the same pesticide will eventually lead to crop-damaging insects which are resistant to that pesticide. The farmer knows from experience that growing just one crop may maximize the profits from that crop, but it also maximizes the exposure to changes in prices in that commodity. In short, a farmer doesn't need the advice of an agronomist to know that growing just one crop on the same ground year after year is a bad idea. And that's not due to the education he received, that's due to the collective experience of generations of farmers which has been handed down to modern farmers. Taleb's theory of why this situation is provided the name for the book he published in 2018. The educated idiots who are telling others how things should be and what others should do face no consequences for being wrong. Those consequences are borne by the people to whom they are dictating. Taleb uses the example of the fund manager who gets a percentage of any profits from the fund, but faces no penalty for any losses the fund generates. The fund manager is actually incentivized to take greater risks with the fund's investments. In order to prevent this, those who would give advice to others must have skin in the game, both a positive and a negative stake in the outcome. The biggest problem with educated idiots is that they are often in a position of profound influence. They find employment as policymakers, activists, journalists, academics, and pundits. These individuals are happy to tell us the way things ought to be and consider themselves to be part of a grassroots movement. Those who agree with them are participating in democracy. Those who disagree with them are populist reactionaries. It doesn't matter if the opposition is educated as well. To the educated idiot, Anyone who disagrees simply doesn't know enough about the subject to comment and is ignoring the science. Often the position of the educated idiot is to dismiss those with whom they disagree as completely uneducated, yet they publicly praise their supporters despite the fact that those supporters are typically no more educated or enlightened than those whom they deride. The IYI term may be new, but the educated idiot is not. Karl Marx was highly educated, yet his activism and commitment to writing his treatises on communism was supported primarily by the contributions of Friedrich Engels, the son of a wealthy industrialist whose largesse depended on the very system that Marx was busy trying to dismantle. Valerie Solanus held a degree in psychology and attended graduate school. She dedicated her life to eliminating patriarchal culture, going so far as to publish the Scum Manifesto in 1967. The Scum Manifesto lists multiple arguments in favor of eliminating the male sex as a moral imperative. It is so radical that it only becomes a palatable read if one considers it to be satire, something that Solanus was ambiguous at best about claiming. Oh, and she shot Annie Warhol because she believed that he was trying to steal the rights to her writing. Let's not forget about that, shall we? The work produced by educated idiots has profoundly impacted the world, especially in the last few decades. Those who do not agree with the positions of educated idiots have been dismissed so often that a significant number of people have begun to reject expert opinions in general. Dr. Tom Nichols refers to this as the death of expertise, and in some ways, I could agree with him. Global climate change has presented anthropogenic climate change as a doomsday proposition for so long that a growing group now believes the earth to be flat and climate change to be a complete myth. A falsified study claimed that the MMR vaccine caused autism, and the anti-vax movement resulted. If one digs into any conspiracy theory, one can find references to the published work of an educated idiot. I've said many times in my life that I'm allergic to stupidity. Ignorance, the lack of knowledge, can be easily cured with education. 
Naivety, the lack of experience, fades with time. Stupidity, however, is a chronic condition. Stupidity is neither a lack of capacity to learn nor a lack of opportunity to learn. It's a lack of willingness to learn. It manifests in the Karen meme, where people making unreasonable demands become incensed when denied those demands. It manifests in the actually meme, when people insist on policing speech in order to include themselves in a conversation. It even shows up in online trolling, where genuine opportunities for positive interactions and personal growth are ruined by some rando who wants to be edgy. Educated idiots are stupid. Because they are stupid, they react poorly to having their idiocy revealed. Academic hoax articles are nothing new and prove to be an interesting mechanism for testing the attentiveness of editorial boards and the effectiveness of peer review in academia. In 2017, three academics conducted an experiment by publishing a series of journal articles with titles like The Conceptual Penis. These articles were filled with buzzwords and academic-sounding tripe, and they were completely bogus. It was a deliberate hoax which they perpetrated to demonstrate the problems with academic publishing, and it worked like a charm. No less a respected academic publisher than Sage Publishing accepted their articles for publication, with editorial boards and peer review alike completely missing the total vacuity of the articles. Once the story broke that the trio was deliberately publishing nonsense to prove the educated idiocy rife within the academic community, Sage Publishing used one of their own publications to explain that the disciplines in question would survive and grow stronger. That publication, the Pacific Standard, folded entirely less than two years after publishing that defense. And yet, the people who were so completely taken in by the hoax articles have yet to figure out why they were so vulnerable to that hoax. The educated idiot is alive and well. They still condescendingly explain why Trump rallies are always super spreader events for COVID, and yet unruly protests and riots against Trump never are. They justify the destruction of both public and private property as a natural consequence of systemic oppression in the United States, despite the fact that the United States has some of the most comprehensive laws to protect against systemic oppression in the world and has for decades. They are still telling us that income disparity is the source of societal woes, despite the fact that equality of opportunity is a core tenet of our system, and more economic and social mobility exists here in the United States than anywhere else in the world. They even ignore the basic fact that if everyone is paid equally, then no incentive exists to make more than the absolute minimum effort or to innovate. They're even redefining the meaning of free speech on social media platforms acting as publishers every day and yet claiming to only be platforms. All the while, they are listening to a small group of very loud people who leverage public protests to restrict or eliminate advertising on any content that they just don't like, and on any platforms which don't force that content and the creators that make it off of those platforms. Educated idiots even have the programmers for some of those internet platforms searching their own code line by line in order to remove any words and phrases which they deem to be problematic, ignoring the fact that only programmers would be able to even look at that code, much less become offended by the usage of words deemed to be problematic by educated idiots. Unfortunately, educated idiots have been with us since the beginning of education. There's no indication that we will run out of educated idiots anytime soon, either. But choosing between listening to them and ignoring them? That's entirely up to us. As far as I'm concerned, I believe that we've listened to them long enough. I believe that the cancel culture they've created, and now blame on others, has to stop. And I believe that the only way that we can make it stop is to stand up for common sense. Stand up against the destruction for which they are advocating, and above all, to keep them out of elected office and other positions of authority. Enough is enough.